I'd like to give you a couple of examples of human factors interventions that I think have improved safety. The first is the World Health Organization Safer Surgery Checklist. Now that was introduced in 2010 and is now widely used throughout the whole world. But it wasn't introduced until it had been tested uh, and a big trial was done uh, on eight sites over both the developed and the developing world and that trial showed in a before and after study that those hospitals that used it had a 50% reduction in deaths and complications. Since it was introduced worldwide, further studies have been done that have replicated those findings, but only when it's been used effectively, staff have been engaged, and it's been done as part of a wider human factors implementation. So when it's combined with preoperative briefings, a sign-in in the anaesthetic room, a time-out before the incision is made, and a sign-out at the end of the procedure, and particularly if the debriefing is carried out to improve teamwork as well, then it's shown to be much more effective. The second example is that of measures to try and prevent administration of drugs by the wrong route. We've known for a long time that certain drugs, particularly one called vincristine, if given accidentally into the cerebrospinal fluid instead of intravenously, can often be fatal. There are ways of physically preventing that happening by designing equipment so that the syringes used to administer it won't fit the spinal needles. In the same way that a petrol station forecourt can have pumps that won't deliver diesel into a petrol car. But it's taken a long time to make those widely available. Now that they are, it shouldn't happen again.